Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking again about name doubles. I did a couple other videos about name doubles. I will link those in the description. Uh, but today we're talking about how to set default values for name doubles. And I'm going to show you the old way and the slightly less old way and then the new typing way to set defaults. And so without further ado, let's jump into that. Oh, and I guess we'll also show kind of a, a middle ground way to do it uh, manually as well. Okay, so let's start with the old way to do this. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna go from kind of worst practice to best practice here. Uh, so, you know, see see where we've, how far we've come in Python, basically. So we're gonna be using collections.nameTouble, which again, that's the old, the old way to do name tuples in Python. And, uh, you know, typing.nameTouble being the new way. And in order to make a name tuple class, we're gonna make a class called C, collections dot, Name tuple. It's a good idea to match the class name with the name of the variable you're going to get over here. And we're going to pass in the fields, I don't know, X and Y. So it's just going to be a silly example, nothing, you know, nothing too, nothing too complicated here. And the way you used to be able to set defaults here, uh, you can, I mean, you can still do this now, the code still works, uh, is you would modify the function object for the initialization of C. And so this is going to look a little bit weird, and admittedly, it is a little bit weird. Uh, defaults equals one. So what we're doing is we're kind of patching the defaults attribute of the new function. And the defaults will fill from right to left. So this will set one as the default for y. Let's actually make x, y, c. Uh, so this will set one for y and two for z as our defaults here, if I recall correctly. Dash i t dot pi, and if we make c of one, you'll see that we get, or sorry, one for y and two for z. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I said here. Uh, and of course you can put in, you know, non-default values there to, to override that. So this is kind of the, the old and seems a little bit hacky sort of way to do this. A little bit less hacky way, um... So old, kind of hacky. <laughs> the less hacky way is to override double under new yourself. So we're gonna copy that fr from there. Uh, we're gonna call this one C2. And we're gonna actually inherit from name tuple. And I haven't talked about this yet. Oh, I talked about it briefly, but when you inherit from name tuple, it's a good idea to set this. I haven't explained why, but I'll, I'll explain that in another video. Uh, but here we're going to override new, and we're going to use the same variables as the base class. We're going to have x, uh, y, but we're going to give y a default of 1, and we're going to give z a default of 2. And we're going to do super.new class x, y, c. So this, this is actually doing the same thing as this here, but it's a little bit more explicit and shows you kind of the, the new function here. Old, uh, override, new, manually. Now note that it has to be double under new here and not double under init, and this is due to how a tuple gets initialized. Normally when you write classes in Python, you're gonna write double under init and not double under new. Um, in this case, we're using double under new. So let's try this now with C2. Uh, one, two, three. So if we pass all the values in, we get that. If we leave out X and Y, you'll see that they get defaulted to one and two as we expected. Um, and so, we, you know, if we, of course, put one value in here, it'll override this one and leave this one as the default. This is the way where you'll override double under doom manually. And uh, just to reiterate, this works in Python 2 um, plus. So it works in old versions of Python as well. This one is also Python 2 plus, uh, although I guess technically this super call here, <laughs> um, yeah, if you wanted to make it Python 2 compatible, you'd use return super c2 class dot new. You would do this because uh, this form of super is new in Python 3. Okay, let's go on to the third way. This is a new-ish way, but not not the the completely new way. New-ish. Uh, this is Python 3.7 plus, if I recall correctly, and that is to set the defaults directly in the name tuple itself. So if we do this. There's a new defaults argument here. And again, these fill from, from right to left. So these these will splat over Y and Z. Uh, let's actually call this C3. So we get a third class here. And 
you know, if you don't need to support older versions of Python, this is a better alternative. Um, we'll get to the best alternative last. And if we do C3.1, you'll see that that defaults these to 1 and 2. And of course, if we pass in these values, they overwrite those too. So you can see that this also works as well. Now the last, and in my opinion, the best way, is to not use collectors.nameTuple, but instead use typing name tuple. Name tuple. And the way you define a typing name tuple, which I actually go over in the previous videos, is to give each of these a type. So you'll say x is an int, y is an int, and z is an int. And this is Python 3.6 and above. Uh, more specifically, this is like 3.6.1 plus if you need other features of name tuple. Uh, but for the most part, you can just say this is Python 3.6 plus. And we want to set our defaults here. And the way you do that is by setting them as class attributes. Uh, the name tuple base, base class actually has some weird meta class magic that uh, makes these not class variables. It transforms them into, you know, this sort of double under new function up here. Uh, but that's kind of magical and behind the scenes. So if we run this, this final version of this code, and we do C4, 1, you'll see that it defaults. Oh, I did 2 and 3. should have done this as 1 and 2, so it's the same as all of the other ones. Uh, so you can see it defaults that to 1 and 2, and of course we can pass in defaults here. Anyway, these are kind of the, the four ways that you can approach this. Uh, my recommendation is to use the last one if you don't need to support things older than 3.6. Uh, otherwise, you know, if you need to support something older than 3.6, pick one of these two approaches. Uh, but hopefully this was helpful. If you have additional things that you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.